everybody. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through um, force and stability, which is activity 5.7 currently in Project Lead the Way's Introduction to Engineering Design course. Um, and this is really meant to be an introduction to moments and the concept of rotational equilibrium, both things that seem to be rocket science um, until you really get into them or you break them down and, and um, discover the physics behind what's really happening. And it's really not that difficult um, if you think about it like a simple machine, like a first class lever. So let's talk, okay? Um, um, first of all, what is a moment? A moment is a description of a rotational force, like perhaps the one that would cause the chair in the picture below to spin. So moments are caused by external forces, like maybe it's you pushing on the chair, and it makes the object spin, or it at least attempts to make the object spin. Um, and one thing to note is the moments do not cause translation. In other words, a moment is not the force that I might apply on the chair that would cause it to roll across the room. That would be changing position. We're talking about spinning in place, um, and that's what the moment is, the rotational piece of that. So obviously it depends on where I apply that force. If I push at certain places on that chair, it's going to roll. That's not a moment. But if I push with the exact same amount of force but in a different location, I can cause the chair to spin instead, in which case I've caused a moment on that chair. Okay, The math behind that is very simple, and this is on page three of the PLTW formula sheet for 2017 version at least, and it's towards the bottom right corner, and you can see it is M is equal to FD with that little symbol next to it. That little symbol means perpendicular. So really what we have is the moment is equal to the amount of force that you apply times the perpendicular distance from the point of rotation to where you apply the force. Okay, that's going to become more evident in a couple of pictures later on. But that's the mathematical formula that we're interested in is force times distance. So now another term before we get into examples. What is rotational equilibrium? Rotational equilibrium is a term that we can use to describe an object or a system of objects that are not rotating. So anything obviously that's sitting still it's in rotational equilibrium, okay? So if, the, if a system is not rotating, really there's only two possible causes. The first one might be maybe no rotational forces are acting on it. And if that's the case, I mean, why are we bother studying that, right? I mean, let's bother with something that actually has something going on. So in that case, we're talking about when applied moments, rotational forces perfectly counteract each other, okay? Sorry about those little notifications in the bottom. All right, so the applied moments perfectly counteract each other like you might see with a, just a typical seesaw, right? So you have a little person and a big person, and we know that if we can space ourselves away from the fulcrum from that pivot point just at the right distance, we can cause ourselves to not rotate, okay? You'll notice that the littler person over here is a larger distance away from the pivot point, the fulcrum here than the bigger person, which applies a larger force, who is closer to the fulcrum. And that's because little force times big distance is the same thing as big force times little distance. Okay, it's force times distance in both cases. So if the moments are perfectly balanced, what we would do then is we would say, okay, let's go back to this example. I want you to notice here that this person, if she was the only one that was on the seesaw, would cause this seesaw to come and rotate this way. If she was the only one, right, it would cause a counterclockwise rotation. So we say that she is providing a counterclockwise moment. Likewise, this giant over here, he's the only one on the seesaw. He would force the object to rotate this way if it could. So that would be a clockwise moment. And so what we would do mathematically then is we would say if those two things are perfectly balanced, that means the force times the distance for the clockwise, in that case the woman, is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance counterclockwise from the man, okay? Or I think I got those backwards, but you get the idea, okay? We would set those two equally to each other, and we would solve for the unknown. One of those is going to be unknown, okay? So here's an example, and I think that what uh, I'll do is I will walk through this example, and then I'll cut it off and create a second video for another example later on. Pretty typical example here. We have a first-class lever, a seesaw, okay? How far does the force on the right need to be placed from the fulcrum in order for that system to be in rotational equilibrium? In other words, for things to not move, okay? So let's take a look at this. If it were only the force on the left, the only the 15 pound force, it would cause a counterclockwise rotation because without this force to balance it, this seesaw would want to go this direction counterclockwise. If 
the purple force, the blue one over here, whatever color that is, was on its own, and the other one doesn't exi exist. If this didn't exist, then the seesaw would want to go clockwise. Okay, so we have a counterclockwise moment from the left side and a clockwise moment from the right side. Now, if it's in rotational equilibrium, if it's not moving, then what we know is this. The counterclockwise movement moment is equal to the clockwise moment. Therefore, force times distance on the left side is equal to force times distance on the right side. And the force times the distance, if we set it up for each side, gives us this. The only unknown is the distance on the right-hand side. So, a little math, that's easy, 15 times 5.5 on the left, and then we divide 36 and two-thirds out. That would give us a distance of 2.25 inches, which makes sense, because you know that this bigger force of 36 pounds would have to be closer to the fulcrum, in other words, less than 5.5, in order to balance out this smaller force, okay? So, that's how a typical problem might work, okay? I'm going to stop the video here, because we're six minutes in. And in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start talking about what about if we're applied at angles? How does this relate to tipping force? Can we see another example? And I'll try to get through that in at least maybe one more video. It might be two. Hopefully this makes sense, the idea of rotational equilibrium and a moment and what they're talking about with moments with the rotational forces. If you have any questions and you're in my class, please do not hesitate to ask.